Okay, YouTube. Welcome back. Obers here again. This time, welcome to part two of uh, my opinion of the new uh, Japanese uh, destroyer lines uh, with update 5.15. Uh, so, we've gotten through all the high tier ships, which they only really need overall slight tweaking here and there to a couple of things in my opinion <clears throat> primary issues are torpedo speed for the tier sevens as I said before um, and of course uh, the uh, issues with uh, the 127 millimeter guns um, their HE damage needs to be um, increased slightly um, uh, some individual ship issues I think Yugumo needs to have her torpedo range increased not her speed uh, not the torpedo speed but torpedo range um, so it's just minor little things that need to be adjusted but let's get into tier 6 now so here we have the hot Saharu and we have the Fubuki now Remember, at Tier 5 is where the Japanese line splits off between what they call the Torpedo Boat Line and the Gunboat Line. And uh, when they did that, they got the Mutsuki. Let me do this. The Minikaze and the Mutsuki, they, they put them in the right lines. Since Mutsuki is always, when you upgrade her, she only had two guns. One forward, one aft. Uh she always played even when she was originally in the game uh back in closed beta she was always a really a pure torpedo boat um so you know what we're gonna we're, we're gonna start from from the beginning here we're gonna start from here and work our way up <laughs> since i already went through this so anyway the mutsuki let's let's talk about the mutsuki real fast Okay, so she was already a torpedo boat, even way back in the day, because when you upgraded her to this, which you had to do to get... Back then, she had two choices of torpedo, and and so to get the, her best torpedoes, you, you had to upgrade the hull. And so she she has always been a torpedo boat. I mean, just, and she used to be a good one in the closed beta and in the... Uh, uh, when, the when the game first became uh, open... Uh, an open uh, test, an open beta test game. Um, she uh, she was a good ship. She was all right. Uh, in fact, this is the original captain. I, I've never moved this captain. Just sadly, over time, um, as uh, war gaming changed things and then gave uh, you know gave into battleships and and cruisers complaining all the time. Uh, they uh, this ship gradually through indirect nerfs, you know, through the things that that they were giving the uh, battleship and cruiser lines of uh, for the other players. Um, this ship became less and less effective, and uh, so I just stopped using her. And really, I should have moved the captain long ago to some other ship and I just never never have I guess there's always been a part of me hoping that they would show some love to this ship and uh, give her a couple of buffs here and there and I did have high hopes that with her being brought down to tier 5 um, there would be improvements uh, and overall no uh, Nope, I don't see it. <clears throat> uh, she's still basically uh, not the go-to boat of choice at Tier 5. Um, her speed is decent. Uh, her detectability uh, concealment rating is good. Uh, where the problem comes in is... Uh, torpedo speed, torpedo... I would say torpedo speed not so much here... I think the range should be buffed. Again, I think I would say give her a nine kilometer torpedo range, and I think that would make her a more viable choice um, 
to use. Uh, other than that, um, you know, overall it's just uh, when I have a choice here between the Mutsuki, the Minikaze, or either of my two premium boats, I'm going to take the premiums. You know, right now, that's what the uh, this uh, update has done to the mid-tier Japanese ships. So. The Mutsuki, still in need of some attention. Um, hopefully Wargaming will get around to it. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, let's look at the boat that really pisses people off. Minikaze. The, the updates to the Minikaze. And I have to agree, uh, this, this boat got whacked with a gold bat. And maybe some of you that uh, uh, remember uh, there, there used to be an anime about Golden Bat. Actually, uh, what I was thinking of here was um, the uh, anime Paranoia Agent and uh, Little Slugger, the guy with the that was on the roller skates with the uh, bent-up uh, aluminum bat that would come and beat the hell out of everybody. And uh, when I look at this ship now, I think of him, you know, coming down to beat the hell out of this and nerf this boat into oblivion, you know. I mean, what can you say <laughs> anyway? Oh, boy, yeah. Uh, this is, honestly, what Wargaming did here with the Minikaze was completely unneeded. Uh, they didn't need to touch this boat in any way, shape, or form. Um, in essence, I think they've made a huge mistake because... I'm, the, I'm a player who has spent a ton of money on this game. I really have. On, on not only this game, but my four years of playing World of Tanks. As you can see, I do have 115 ships, and I still have eight vacant slots. So I put a ton of, of money into this game. I've bought all the premium uh, ships. You look at my, up at the top there, top left uh, corner, you'll see I have 709 days of premium time. And that's because when I first got into World of Tanks, I enjoyed the game so much, I actually bought five years of premium time. Just so that I wouldn't have to worry about forgetting to pay for premium time. And since then, because of uh, buying premium packages, premium tank or premium ship packages where you got another 30 days or another 7 days here and there, uh, of uh, premium time in the packages. That's why I still have almost two years of premium time left. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, that's why I'm I'm at where I'm at. You know. So yes, I, I you know I'm sure a lot of you out there are saying I'm a sucker, and you're most probably very right. But uh, I have enjoyed this game. I really. I really have, but uh, you know, you got to look at the fact that uh, you know this game uh, came from a nation or nations now uh, that used to pride themselves on uh, ha uh, having the highest concentration of chess champions in the world. Uh, you know, World of Tanks was created in Minsk, which is part of Belarus, and then you have uh, uh, World of Warships, which is up in Saint Petersburg, uh, which is Russia, and. Uh, you know, it's just weird that they would that they would go this route. But anyway, let's watch this video. It hasn't moved. So, I'm banking that the guy is too fixated on running his aircraft. And so I've launched all my torpedoes directly at him. And yet at the same time while I did this, I'm watching. And I'm really expecting him to, you know, put put the ship to full throttle and get the hell out and I'm kind of cursing at myself going I should have put a couple of torpedoes aimed a couple of those torpedoes ahead of the carrier anticipating him moving but he never moved even though he was spotted and that's one of the things Wargaming is already indirectly nerfed uh, the entire destroyer line you see he never moved he's dead He's gone. And the sad thing here, this shouldn't have happened. I've already targeted the Koenig. And as you can see, neither one of these guys have changed course or speed. They're, they're staying on a constant heading, constant speed. And so I've gotten ahead of the uh, Koenig, 
is that I know that from this point, firing my torpedoes towards him, um, they're going to have a shorter distance. He's not going to be outrunning them unless he completely does a, a 90 degree turn, which he hasn't done at this point. So he's still holding his course. And this Nagato has done the same thing. The Farragut fired torpedoes from smoke and took him out. All six of my torpedoes hit that Koenig. All six of them hit because he just stayed same speed, same course. Now here, the guy who's running the Nagato starts to complain about invisible ships. And the sad thing here is what you're looking at is he should have seen the smoke screen from where he was that the Farragut uh, put up. And there you go. See, you know, the, uh, hopefully, hopefully that little that little video footage there will uh, uh, will get people to understand a little bit where I'm coming from. That uh, why should players be penalized for learning to play their ships well uh, by uh, players who are not taking any time to learn how to play theirs? Um, you know, I just I I don't think that's fair. <clears throat> so you'll have to excuse my voice and uh, and everything. This is allergy season again. I, I I think I keep saying that in all my videos right now, and and it is true. I'm just really suffering uh, uh, right now with the uh, weather. You know, the weather has finally started changing here in Southern California, and every time there's a major change, it just affects my sinuses big time. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's the big one. All right, now back to Hatsuharu and Fubuki real fast. Um, in a nutshell, torpedoes need to be buffed in speed. Not not range, but speed. These tor the 59 knot speed is not adequate for tier six. In the same manner that the Minikaze's 57 knot speed doesn't isn't effective at her tier either. Uh, you know, so this adding two knots that's nothing. That that that's not helping these boats at all. Uh, torpedo wise they need to have their torpedo speed buffed um, the Hasaharu is supposed to be the gunboat and this is the only case so far in the game where I can see that there is a definite difference between the reload time and the 180 degree turn time between uh, the ha Hatsuharu's gun turrets and the Fubuki's um, and the Hatsuharu does have the better of the two uh, so you can almost classify Hatsuharu as the gunboat since uh, she does have those advantages over the Fubuki and the other thing is that she's one of the few ships that does get her 127 millimeter guns added into her AA defense because she does have the Model B turrets now, Fubuki, that was taken away. She has her, uh, I believe, the maybe the first upgraded turrets. I, these are not the stock turrets that she had when she was first built. I think this was the first upgrade. And these turrets, of course, as you can see, do not have the ability uh, to elevate... Um, drastically enough to deal with a high angle of attack aircraft and of course to her gun sighting uh, aperture does not elevate either and uh, I know that a lot of people are like but wait a minute these are dual purpose guns but uh, again like I've said before Fubuki you know for those of you who don't actually go around reading history and reading the stats and history of the warships uh, uh, go watch uh, some Kantai collection and uh, watch uh, the first half of the episodes where Fubuki is basically very, very clumsy and rarely can hit an airplane with her, with her uh, guns. 
and the primary reason is because uh, the original guns were not uh, capable of elevating high enough to deal with uh, high angle of attack aircraft. So that's where you stand there. Now the sad thing about Fubuki is she's missing her third gun turret. And for myself, I really wish they would bring that gun turret back. I think Fubuki needs it. And then they could put Fubuki into the uh, uh, gunboat line where she should be, rather than the uh, because this is what this is where it gets weird. Where Minikaze was put into the gunboat line correctly because she has four guns versus Mutsuki's two guns. Uh, and Mutsuki is more of the torpedo boat than the Minikaze was. Uh, all of a sudden they reversed it again. And uh, Fubuki, which should have had all three of her gun turrets, uh, and therefore should have been uh, the gunboat, is instead considered the torpedo boat because she does have nine torpedoes versus the Hatsuharu 6. But uh, when you look at the Hatsuharu's got a slightly better speed, the Hatsuharu's got a, a little bit better concealment rating. Um, Hatsuharu best, definitely has the faster uh, turrets, the better, better guns. Um, but I would say she makes the better to me, she makes the better torpedo boat with her stealth and her speed ability. Um, you know, so I'm kind of up in the air uh, about about these two boats uh, in terms of you know I'm keeping both of them because you know I do like playing at tier six at times and. So I want these boats to do well, but overall I'm going to say, okay, uh, uh, buff the 127mm uh, HE shell uh, damage, and uh, buff the torpedo speed, and both of these boats uh, will be very viable, and you won't have Japanese players pulling out their hair so much that they have to grind their way through these uh, to get rid of them as quickly as possible to get to tier 7 where they finally do start to get uh, you know halfway decent boats um, so that's it uh, last but not least let's take a look at the Izokazi which uh, initially initially even I was upset uh, with the nerfs to this boat but I had forgotten something because I rarely play this boat. I, I really do not play, haven't played uh, the Izukazi much at all uh, of late. Uh, it's been a long time. Because uh, to me, uh, this boat was, for me, too easy to play. Um, when she was in her own tier, uh, at tier 4, uh, even in a tier 5 game, this boat, you have to admit, was overpowered. It, it, it was overpowered. I mean, the funny thing is, is back in the day before they, before Wargaming changed uh, the way in which you could form uh, divisions, that now uh, you can only form divisions with ships being off by one tier, that you can no longer do fail divisions uh, like you used to. You used to be able to fail division with this boat, and it actually wasn't a fail division. You could, uh, I could, I could grab this boat if I wanted to and go into a tier eight game and uh, be devastating with this boat in a tier eight match. So, <clears throat> if any boat in the game was uh, OP, I would say the Izokazi with a good captain. You know, you, you especially with a 15-point uh, or better skipper, this boat, uh, very, very powerful. And overall, you know, I would say borderline OP. I mean, the thing is, is that this boat, back when it could see Tier 6 games, um, with a captain like this one here, uh, a basic captain with maybe just a few skills trained up, um, this boat, uh, you know, you could have some issues in a tier six game. Uh, 
but you could play in a tier six game. This game could ha this ship could handle itself in a tier six match uh, with the torpedoes. Uh, I believe that the torpedo range used to be eight kilometers. I, I can't remember. Uh, again, I haven't played this boat in a while, so I can't remember if the original. Uh, range was eight kilometers or or seven like it is here. I know the speed used to be six, 68 knots, the same as the speed on the tier fives. Uh, so I think it was seven kilometers with a 68 knot speed. So, I mean, with that, uh, you know, this boat could handle itself in tier six matches. But the thing is, is that now this boat gets, and this is what I had forgotten when I initially wrote my. Uh, opinions on the nerfs. Uh, this boat now uh, gets preferential matchmaking. It, the highest tier ship it can see is tier 5. Uh, so in that case, this boat uh, needed the nerfs. The, the nerfs, I'm not going to complain about the nerfs that Board Gaming uh, gave this boat. I think the nerfs that they implemented on the Izokazi were valid. So, out of all the things that Wargaming has changed um, in regards to the Japanese line, um, I'm going to say the Izokazi is the only one that they got 100% uh, right. Um, I think all the nerfs that they gave this boat were justified. And uh, they're not uh, crippling. Uh, in any way shape or form this boat can still work very very well in a tier 4 or tier 5 game with her current torpedoes so um, I'm not gonna you know again wargaming no pro I have no issues with the Izakaze whatsoever and I think you already know where my main issues lie with the changes that you've made the Minikaze totally wrong Mutsuki really isn't any better than what she was before. Again, I just feel she's a, a, a neglected ship. Uh, she's a ship in need of uh, in need of uh, of really being looked at. Um, maybe even just retire her. You know, uh, I don't know. You know, she just doesn't seem to really fit in anywhere. Shiritsuyu, I think is going to still need some balancing. Um, I honestly think you're going to end up getting a ton of flack over that. Um, Akatsuki, not a bad boat. Um, not quite as Japanese as I would like her in terms of concealment, but, eh, she's okay. Uh, Kagero, um, overall, not too, like I say, uh, again, Torp, uh, torps need to be adjusted a bit on her. Um, uh, I would like to see the HE increased on the 127 millimeter guns, but overall, she really doesn't play much different from the old uh, Fubuki at tier eight. So uh, I'm not I'm not going to say I'm disappointed. I'm not thrilled by the ship. I'm not disappointed by the ship. I'm just kind of okay. You know, it's not that big of a change. Yugumo, um, not bad. Uh, I, I think the Yugumo is a little bit better than the Kagero was at Tier 9. So uh, I don't have any issues there. And Shimikaze, uh, the changes are, are minor. You know, the loss in, in uh, HE shell damage is the only uh, difference. But... Overall, she doesn't play any different than she played before, so um, is the Japanese line broken? Um, I'm not going to say it's broken. I'm going to say it's been made a bit more difficult to play, uh, a bit more uh, unforgiving to play. So hopefully, Word Gaming will see the error of their ways and uh, make a few changes here and there, you know, uh, get out that wrench and change a few things. So. There we go, guys. Uh, I know I've taken a ton of your time with these two videos, and I apologize for that. Uh, I am trying to find ways to uh, to uh, um, <laughs> I'll make these videos shorter, but 
I'm an old guy. I like to talk, and uh, you know, so there you go. I don't, I, I don't have a life <laughs> at my age. So uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I can't promise, but I am going to try and make some shorter videos. So um, anyway, uh, I want to thank, uh, want to thank everybody that that has taken the time to watch these videos. Um, especially if you are a uh, wargaming employee. Uh, I do hope you will not take what I have said uh, completely, you know, as me bashing you. I mean, all you got to do is look at my account to see that uh, I have been a long-time, long-standing, loyal player of your offerings, your games. And uh, overall, I just want to see I want to see the game remain fun, engaging, enjoying. You know, I, I want to get enjoyment out of playing the game. I want to see other people get enjoyment out of playing the game. It doesn't please me to to torpedo a battleship player that's just letting me uh, nail him with torpedoes broadside. Uh, the game where I had to use my share at CU and I had to fire 88 torpedoes to get eight hits that was an intense game um that was a really that was a really intense matchup and uh i actually had fun in that game it was annoying it was frustrating as all get out uh not being able to get hits but at the same time um i have to hand it to the the players that were playing their battleships and cruisers were doing so very very well they were doing all the right things. I think Wargaming needs to start focusing on trying to educate players. And then if players refuse to learn, well, then that's their problem. You know, stop, uh, stop uh, uh, penalizing the rest of us who um, have over the years, you know, strive to improve our gameplay, strive to improve, you know, our win rates and how we play um, you know that's uh, that's where the issue comes in here that you end up feeling a bit slighted when uh, you're constantly nerfing things that in some cases don't need nerfs so I'm not I'm not saying that all ships I'm not saying that sh that you don't need to, uh, to balance things over time of course you do balancing's a part of the game but uh, and will always be a part of the game and we have to get used to that and some nerfs like the Izokaze I will warrant you the Izokaze was a valid what you did was valid I'll support you hundred percent on the nerfs that you put to the Izokaze based on the new matchmaking and everything else um, but the Minikaze on the other hand uh, didn't need any nerfs really didn't and like I say, you're, I think you've opened yourself up to a lot of criticism, especially from players who do not put any money into the game. Uh, they're going to be uh, looking at players using boats like the Fujin and uh, the Kamikaze R, and they're going to be saying, hey, uh, you know, this is pay to win. Uh, why is it that I built a boat that's almost identical to those, but it doesn't have the torpedo damage? doesn't have the torpedo speed uh you know uh big whoop de doo i get a couple of knots more speed out of out of my boat but overall uh that doesn't make up for uh the uh the uh higher damage that these premium ships can do so again i would say um i think the best move you could make would be to um, uh, buff the Minikaze back up to what she was, you know, bring back her original statistics and let everything else fall where, where it lies because um, uh, you can't really go and, and nerf the premiums. If you do that, you'll have an even greater uproar from those of us who put money into this game to buy those ships in the first place. So, um, there you go. That's, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And, uh, again, I hope that, that my criticisms are taken in the right 
you know, way. I'm not trying to uh, bash the game in any way, shape, or form. I love this game. Um, and I just want to see it uh, continue to be a fun game for everyone to play. So I think we need to, I think board gaming needs to start looking at ways to try and teach players how to play better. Uh, and not coddle players that uh, refuse to uh, learn from their mistakes. Anyway, that's all I got to say, guys. Uh, I'm sorry for the long rant. Believe me, I've spent days on, uh, I've spent, yeah, uh, 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 about 16, 17 hours going through this over and over again, trying to make a decent video and get all my thoughts in order here on it. And, uh, I most probably still haven't succeeded in doing that, but um, anyway, it is what it is. Um, thank you guys for listening, and uh, I'll see you out there. And if I don't see you, uh, do me a favor and sink a few for me, would you? Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.